Hello and welcome to Let's Get Pivotal, a podcast where we interview top industry leaders to get their unique perspective. My name is Kerry Patel and together with my host. Hi guys, my name is Ross Lee. I am the co-host on this show for Let's Get Pivotal. I am the CTO, I'm the Chief Technical Officer of Autotech and Bio3D. However, it's a pleasure to be on our third episode today. And of course, I'm glad to have our guest on our show today as well, Dr. Seth. Um, hey guys, thanks for having me here on this podcast. My name is Seth. I guess I could say my current job description right now, this current one would be a practicing dentist and a dental technician. While 10 years in my line of work, I had the privilege to build and work with a great team of excellent dentists and technicians. The team that we had also contributes to the founding of our own dental lab. We call it Denrite Laboratory. Ever since, we have been working very closely with our own, within our own team and as well as with some dentists that sources their cases to us and together executing prosthetic cases on the entire workflow. So with every single step in great detail, we get to witness and the experience has opened up great learning opportunities and it's really exciting. Yeah, sounds like you're in a very unique situation. There's not too many clinicians out there that have... Uh also can consider themselves a dental technician. That's actually very interesting, actually. Um, so as a clinician, um, also involved in a production digital lab, um, what are some of your great insights that you've uh, gained from actually having your toes in both sides of uh, the whole dental workflow? We, we actually, great insights, right? We started the dental lab initially with one motive, actually. We wanted to find out what are the technical details that link to the difficulties we faced previously when we issue a prosthesis. Well, that's at least uh, the objective at that time. So, so on the starting of the journey, naturally, we start with uh, learning the lab side procedures, right? So, of course, it's the initial part. So, we have a lot of hiccups and repeats and whatnot. But what we did not expect is we actually also learn a lot of fine details, the clinical side, the clinical details that the clinicians sometimes take for granted. And those turns out to be very, very darn important in the technical aspect. So as by the time we progress to the part where we think that, okay, this is great, this is fine, this is what we want, meaning that in the case where the dentist did everything right, the technician did everything right, and the issue of the prosthesis is just fine. It drops in the context as well, the shapes as well, little to none adjustment of the occlusion. Well, if this is like the, the, the standard that we want to meet, and when we meet it, we as a team has already gained a lot of information and experience. So answering your question, the greatest insight that I have gained, or rather we have gained, would be the importance of the dentist technician relation. It's like a relationship mm -hmm. term. So it, it is not a popular subject of discussion, but we when we take a closer look at how dentists and technician work together, it's so separated. It's like it's almost like a dentist prescribing a drug. Yeah. You know, the technician receives the instruction and under any circumstances has to deliver a product. And by hook or by crook they'll try to fit it in. You know, that's, it's not something that we really like. It's not the ideal situation, I would say, right? Yeah, and yeah, definitely not. Yeah. yeah, but of course, I'm not saying that this applies to every case. But uh, trust me, when and as a dentist, I have this, I have my friends, my colleagues, and we talk about these issues. And also as a dental technician, my mentor, my fellow technicians, and we talk about this issue as well. And trust me, from both sides, it's not uncommon. It's very, very common. So it is a problem, but nobody is thinking of issuing that address. I mean, uh, address that issue, <laughs> sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in terms of that, like because you were able to jump into, to go, I mean, from clinician, you were able to go into a dental lab as well. You actually picked up those, uh, those never seen before ideas as well. Like for example, working with labs, the communications with labs, um, I think, and also, that when you are able to sit on both sides of the boats, I think it also helps you understanding 
how to also create that better communication back and forth with uh, both sides of the, the boat. If you know every single step that, you know, you actually understand the, the pro, I mean, the difficulties. Yeah, it's, it's definitely something that doesn't really get spoken about too much. Um, the, the, the dental, uh, well, the, the clinician and the technician relationship. And in like, so from what I've read in some of the European markets, um, the clinician has a preference for the technician that they will work with, for example. And this is primarily because they've worked together over an extended period of time and they've sort of, you know, communicated and, and been honest with each other, you know, like I need, um, I need you to do this, this, and this, and you know, it goes both ways. And yeah. so once this actually develops, I think, um, sort of everybody uh, benefits, yeah. I think in the world. So, yeah. So Dr. Seth, uh, in regards to, you know, earlier, just to talk about a little bit more of your question, the answer that you gave earlier, uh, you did say that you had certain hiccups um, going through this process. Do you think you can let me know a little bit more on, well, let us know or the listeners know what, what are these hiccups that, you know, that you came across? Yeah. Well, what I meant about hiccups in my previous um, answers is like the hiccups that I faced in the lab side because um, we are not familiar with the lab side procedures to start off with. So I have to go through uh, tries out. Just so hiccups is just like um, the process from when we receive the impression and we pull out models. Every single step is very important. We pull out models, we make sure there's no bubble. We section the models, we scan it. We have to trim the borders out, make the margin obvious. We didn't do it well, it will reflect in your final prosthesis. And when we issue the prosthesis, be it a crown or a bridge, anything, you will find trouble with it. So I will, I, we find out that if you did every single step properly, and of course, the clinical side, I mean, the impression must be well, must be good, the prep must be good. And if you do everything right, actually it's possible to get a prosthesis that fit just with every single details perfect, I mean, a perfect fit is possible. It's, it's not like what we assumed last time. It, mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely mean to get it in. No, it's actually possible, especially now we have this digital uh, workflow. Describing uh, the plug and play, essentially. If everything is done properly and everybody understands what's going on, including the technician as well as the clinician, you can get plug and play crowns. You can get plug and play bridges. You can get plug and play dentures, even for that matter. Yeah. Yeah. But you just have to work out the uh, potential problems, uh, the fine details. We have to work it out. Iron. When we get to that place, we will have what you say, like you say, like a plug and play thing. You know? And that will be very satisfying. Yeah, that definitely. <laughs> so so, so I, guess, I guess it's, uh, it's good to say that uh, do, do you feel that this has made you a better clinician now that, for example, you no, not only know the clinical side, but you also know the laboratory side as well? Uh, if so, yeah. and, and which way, you know? Well, to, has it made me a better clinician? Yes, I would say that, uh, it's a definite yes. Now, simply if you can see how your work on a patient comes up to the lab, and I know we dentists have loops, Microsoft, I mean microscopes that zoom in, quite a, you know, a big amount, but you know when your, your case is being scanned into a computer and it is projected on a digital screen, you really can zoom infinitely in. And when you zoom in, all the flaws and errors is being enlarged. So when it's enlarged, you can actually really see what you have done wrong. It, sometimes it can be really embarrassing. So, yeah. But that's for the case for silicon, right? So. Um, for dentists that has intraoral scanner, they would have seen it on their own screens, mm -hmm. right? So yep. if you start to get, you understand what goes on in the lab to fabricate that crown, you have the ability to backtrack and pinpoint whatever errors that cause the problem. So of course, with all this information, you will get to improve on each process and with each improvement, you will get better as a clinician. So yeah, definitely, yes. Yeah, it's, 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 it's quite humbling, I would imagine, for um, everybody to really take a proper look at their work because, 
you know, it's, it's admitting to yourself, maybe I need to improve um, this process. I need to improve the way I'm doing maybe this prep. I need to improve something along the workflow. But I feel like, um, you know, being in this uh, market for a while now, that clear communications and yeah. everybody being on the same page really, really does help the workflow. And then, of course, ultimately, the whole concept is that we're in this for the patient. You know, we're, we're in this in some way, form, to provide some sort of healthcare, some sort of, um, you know, good quality services. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite, I, I would say it's quite gutsy of you to come out and uh, say such things, Dr. Seth, for sure. <laughs> but, well, it has to be said, right? I mean, it, it is the truth. <laughs> I'm spoken. So, do you have some thoughts that you would like to share with uh, maybe technicians from a, from a, you know, from a clinical perspective in, in terms of it's not always the most easy thing to, to work with patients. And so sometimes that can affect, uh, can affect your preps, for example. What you say actually hits the spots. It's not that easy. Yeah. Well, well, I would say for the technician, you would talk to a dentist if Similar. You would want to know what your dentist do in the exact procedure, right? So it, you can't talk to your dentist. All of us are, it's that difficult, you know? I mean, technician, if you talk to technician, they will always say, oh, it's very difficult to talk to a dentist because of um, the relationship is not as like a team kind of relationship. It's more like a boss, um, you know, boss and employee kind of thing. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. I don't really share your opinions right loudly, especially so openly. But, yes, correct. So, um, let me tell you something about dentists. Sometimes you take a you take a case and the impression or the model you just received, and I know a lot of technicians take a look at the model and they will kind of curse under their breath, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But actually, what what the mission might not see behind the scene is like mm -hmm. it's not easy to get a prep. Actually, we would aim for a perfection, but it's not actually easy to get it right. So, yeah. you're working in an oral cavity is uh, is another level of games, and trimming down a tooth by itself is already difficult. Bearing in mind that the dentist is always trying to be conservative because they did not want to trim down. A lot of the structure. More than required. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One, because they think of the consequences. If you trim it down, uh, the of course technician will say, ah, I need 1.5 millimeter to work. But then this is that if I get it 1.5 down, yeah. I will lose the tooth band in the future. So it's a constant struggle. Mm -hmm. Let alone that, not just that, because in the oral cavity there's so much delicate structures. There's the tongue, the cheek, yeah. and all this uh, hindering their visions and you know, when trimming and not to say limited mouth opening, gagging reflex, all these yeah. are very nightmare. And yeah. a simple, simple trimming of a tooth can become really, really complicated with just these kind of things that technician can't see. You receive a model, you see how's the prep, but you couldn't see how what's the, going the on dentist. inside. Oh, it's true. It's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, so I would say to a technician. Well, before we kind of like jump into a conclusion, ah, this is really lousy or this is really bad prep. Well, think think about it. Sometimes it's a real struggle to get things done inside the mouth. Yeah, I can I can definitely see that. Um, I, I've seen certain situation where, like you mentioned, you know, limited mouth opening, it becomes very very difficult. And you know that goes for whether you're taking impressions or you're prepping anything for that matter. Well, unfortunately, Dr. Set, I'm going to now turn it around on you. As a technician, what would you like to tell, tell uh, clinicians <laughs> out there? Well, as a technician, what would I like to say to the dentist, right? Yes, you're on the hot seat. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I could be on both sides, right? Well, I guess um, it would be the same. You know, talk, talk to your technician. Just like when the dentist talk to their technician, vice versa, when they get in sync, they mm -hmm. actually can do a lot much. You, you can tell your technician what you want to do. I want this requirement, I want that, and allow your technician to give you a feedback as well. 
you know, in order to achieve what you want, we I need that much of relief. Say for example, I need this, I need that. Then it, it will become working together, you know. But that seems well. I also notice that technicians are a bit of an introvert. <laughs> Lots of us. <laughs> I actually met a lot yeah. of technicians and I really find out they, I mean, in, I, I wouldn't say every every one of them, but uh, a good amount, I mean, amount of us doesn't like to chit chat that much. So, so they will just keep quiet and say, all right, right, I'll do this for mm. you then. I, I think part, part of what you're trying to get to is that technicians uh, have a difficult time because they can't always sort of express their opinions on like the same level as perhaps the clinicians. And, yeah. and so that sort of, I would say, disparity really makes it difficult to have any sort of honest communication between, uh, you know, a, a clinician and the uh, technician. And I think that might be part of the thing that we may want to start looking at and changing in Malaysia. I mean, with the advent of digital, that really, really, you know, makes it, I think, a lot easier because like, like you mentioned, you know, as a clinician, if, if you're taking a digital scan, you can tell sort of straight away whether that prep is uh, good enough for you for the restoration. And, you know, because digital is almost instantaneous, you know, we now have the ability to, you know, instantly send a scan if we want to, to our technicians and, you know, have a conversation actually. If, if you're doing a com complex, complicated case, it's entirely possible now to go ahead and scan, send it. Have a conversation with a technician you think this is okay do you think you can create a prosthesis on this um you know and there's like real-time adjustment capabilities now possible so I, I i hope i hope that uh you know we can really start to have clinician and technician sort of uh, playing playing on the same same level easy. I, i'm saying because me myself i'm lucky enough to have a handful of dentists that works with me and seriously, they are great people, great dentists, open-minded. They talk every single thing in, and they talk every single details that they want and how, and I actually can respond. Not, not because I'm a dentist of some sort, but I find that a lot of us is coming to be, um, you know, uh, accepting to work really close, just like, like a teamwork thing. And dentist is being like the leader of the team and they are bringing everybody in and working close together to deliver good work. And that actually ultimately benefits the patients and that's what we want, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think also definitely the, the important part is that both, both parties, both sides can accept uh, positive, constructive criticism. Uh, that that will definitely be the way forward for technicians and clinicians to work better with each other, uh, because I mean we also can understand some people they cannot take uh, too much uh, criticism when you know you yeah. ask them to retake an impression. I think that also scares some labs as well in terms of having to tell the doctor to retake their impression to let them yeah. know that it was it's really true. bad. And uh, and you know what? I'm yeah. pretty sure. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you know that, Doctor Set. <laughs> so, so I think if if that if that barrier is is uh, is broken down, I think I think definitely communication, uh, technicians working with uh, clinicians, uh, it'll definitely yeah. be yeah, much true. much true. easier. I mean, the communications will be better, but I I feel like what will what will come out of uh, better communications is everybody's sort of skill levels will improve. Because, yeah. you know, you're getting feedback from a clinician if you're a technician and you're getting feedback from a technician if you're a clinician. And I think that generally actually um, will improve everybody's skills yeah. because you're, you're yeah. shining a light in areas that otherwise don't usually or didn't usually get uh, a light shone on it. Yeah. Correct. So. And it's, it's just like the simple thing, like what uh, doctor said you explained earlier. Um, where example you get doing a prep done you want to take an impression there's so many factors that you guys are involved with the the, the structure of the tooth how is the the the, the tongue in the patient uh, the vertical opening um, of course technicians they don't they never see that they only see the impression that gets to them um, yeah. 
But uh, I guess hopefully, you know, technicians, they listen to this and with what you have to say, they get to understand a little bit more sometimes why it's a bit challenging uh, to get that nice uh, margins or perfect preps. Um, so at least, at least we all know that, you know, it's not just a simple, straightforward yeah, cut. That's it it's it. so simple much more. Yeah. And as we struggle in the <laughs> clinics. And I, I think now with the, the times that we're facing, the challenges ahead, I think it's more important than ever to actually keep all lines of communications open. Because, I mean, if you think about it right now, it's a time to be efficient. It's time that we don't waste time redoing impressions, redoing restorations. So if, if the communication is good, I think overall, everybody benefits, you know, in, yeah. in, at least from a business standpoint as well. And then potentially, ultimately, the patient at the end as well, where they're not having to perhaps um, redo a restoration, so, you know, things of that nature. So, Dr. Set, um, yeah, so being, being involved, uh, well, being, being uh, owner of a clinic and being involved in your own dental laboratory as well now, um, how, how are you feeling? Because, you know, as I mentioned, it's challenging times right now. It's, uh, it's pedal to the metal almost, you could say. So how do you feel going forward? Are you, are you feeling excited, ready for the challenge? Yeah, definitely. Um, well, um, actually, yeah, I'm, I, am, I am excited because there's so much more in the technical field to learn. Um, what we are talking about just now basically just uh, limits to, I, I think we are still talking about like crowns, bridge, um, yeah, the simple stuff standard, really. Yeah. Uh, the mm, simple stuff standard, really. Uh, mm. Not to say simple, but you know, the standard <laughs> yeah. stuff, but standard yeah. stuff, but stuff, but but you know, there's like this whole there's so much more to learn. So I, I yeah. am I'm still very excited. Uh, it's, it's been a while I started our lab, but I'm still very excited because there's so much more things to learn and each step when you learn something and when the digital part comes in and help you makes it so much more easier. And you get to see your work comes out, and it's nice. It's it's fitting, and it's you you know the the feeling is actually. I'm yeah, still yeah. It's very rewarding. Uh, it's, it's, very it, rewarding. It's, it's it's satisfying and fulfilling. I I would say. I mean, just speaking from experience, I you know I'm not a technician. I am not a, a clinician either, but you know, so I'm a business development manager, as my title says. But being in this market for the past few years, it's actually, you know, it's quite stressful. I'm not going to lie. I think everybody in the dental market knows this, that it's a pretty stressful uh, industry we're in. Um, but it is, it is definitely fulfilling, especially from a digital perspective, um, the potential that is there and how much we have space to grow in Malaysia. Uh, I would definitely agree. It's very, very exciting. Exciting times ahead, in my opinion. All right. Thanks, Dr. Seth. I appreciate yeah, you being like on We'd like to thank podcast. you, Dr. Seth, absolutely, for uh, being brave and being on our podcast. Um, and we'd also like to thank our listeners for tuning in for our third podcast. Um, you've been listening to Let's Get Pivotal with uh, me, Kier Patel, and Mr. Rosley. So subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or catch us on YouTube. And if you catch us on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Thank you.